Welcome to the Let's Be Real Podcast, where we are regarded to as the Started Five. We are powered by the Edge Podcast Network, and we are sponsored by Overtime Heroics. Rebound until we get some more news today. So, I mean, I might even change that name of the episode after the news got today. But how y'all doing? We're doing good. I'm still healthy. Uh, I don't think I have a good. coronavirus. I'm, I'm good. I'm yeah. good. A little dandelion in your hair. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody. Stevenson. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I just got one yesterday, so I'm stripping. Oh, yeah. You be quick to rub your haircut. No, man. He close up on the camera. <laughs> flexing. Everybody out here is stripping and he's flexing. He's like, he's clean right. and everything. <laughs> I don't know. All right, man. Top of the list for today, we have one. It'll be two episodes this week. Um, the first episode will be NFL draft uh, recap. It was too much to. Combine that with other topics. Mm-hmm. And after that, um, next episode will be this one, of course. So, Tigers B-Ball, um, we got some news on that for this week. Mm-hmm. That's why the title was original rebound, but we'll, we'll, we'll It's more like about. block shot or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got him. How about that? <laughs> got him. Yeah, there we go. Let's be real. I got him. <laughs> we had the NFL. We had some pre draft stuff that happened before the draft. Some news that happened. And after the draft, apparently, this yeah. morning, same thing. So, good Sunday for us. After that, trolled and all. First up, Landis Nolan signed with Memphis last Monday, didn't it? Yep. Right, we thought we were covered. Yep. Thought we did. Yeah. Transfer uh, thing. Transfer rules passed through. Got him. But then, mm. this morning. <laughs> He decided he wanted to end the draft. Mm. Although he didn't sign with the agent, but I mean, I mean, I don't know where they're gonna have a draft come by <laughs> right. at this point. So. <laughs> mm. um, but then, yeah, next, who we wanna go? Yeah, but you lead up the Titans. Let's go. Oh yeah. man, goodness gracious, bro! Like, I, I don't even know where to start because I just feel like this program is somehow, some way, already is cursed. Like, if you just go back to around this time last year and all, and all the potential players that we could have had, the the things that have happened with the NCAA, the things that happened with James Wiseman, players that should have been here, players that should that end up leaving. I know we're going to NBA, and then here we are again, Orlando Snowley, um, now going to the draft. This is like, God dang, bro, is this program cursed? Um, so, like you said, he originally um, uh, declared that he was going to go to Memphis early this week, and now he's transferring, so – um, I honestly have no idea, bro. Like, <laughs> I'm just kind of hoping that, like, <laughs> he don't go. Like, because if he don't go, this like, I mean, that's a veteran score, that, of course, that we talked about last week. If, we, if he doesn't go, if he doesn't come in, that's a veteran score we don't have. That's 15 points per game that he average um, in the ACC last year that we don't have. So now Precious is leaving. I'm pretty sure we'll talk about that in a second. So now I'm, I went from, like, okay, cool. And, like, I can take a deep breath. Like, okay, Memphis Tiger program going to be good. Now I'm just like – I'm stressed again. <laughs> so I'm not sure if y'all share the same feelings, but y'all y'all have it. Um, for me, I think it was either it's either one or two things. Either one, he's probably gonna have to sit out. He's probably thinking that the NCAA is probably not gonna vote in favor of the uh new transfer rule, which would have made him eligible for the season. Or he must have got tipped with something else that's probably going to come down on Memphis as opposed to the investigation that's currently going on. Mm -hmm. That is probably two of the only things that would probably convince him to go go ahead and enter the draft. Although, like we said, it's without an agent, but he's not coming back at this point. 
I mean, uh-huh. I throw a third one in too, Trev, if you don't mind. Like, you know, a player just got paid a half a mil to play in the G League, you know. Even if he don't come back to school, I'm pretty sure he can go to a G League team. So that's probably a third option as well. Probably not getting 500K, but, I mean, you're getting paid. It's yeah. getting paid. Yeah, you know? that's yeah. true. Yeah, I'm speaking of that, Greg Brown passed up the G League to sign with Texas. But some people still think he might change his mind down the road, you know, yeah. with coronavirus. And we're able to see the starts all this stuff, so. Piggybacking off of Skylar's point about the program being cursed, I mean, this program been cursed for a long time. Even beyond, like, Calipari, you can go back to, I think the coach was Dana Kurt uh, with Keith Lee. You know, they had, uh, I think it was three years where they had wins taken away because of recruitment violations back then. This is like the 80s, I think. 80s or 70s, one of them. So, I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean. That's exactly how I feel. <laughs> I don't know. That's exactly how I feel. I, I, I think the, the, what Penny needs to do now, he – we, I said before, hashtag four stars only. Like Sharka said, pre-show might be three stars only at this rate because all these athletes who are the elite prospects, they're, they're going pro or, you know, they're not going to college, whatever. It's, just, it's, it's, it's frustrating for the program. And, it, and at some point, you're going to enter the growth of the team itself. And so I said this maybe when we got Wiseman last summer, I was like, this needs to become Villanova where you bring in players, you build them up for two, three, maybe even four years, and you just have a steady factory of of, of, of pro prospects, whether they be like role players or, you know, all-star like Kyle Lowry. You got to – it's coaching now. Like, it's straight-up coaching. Yeah. There's, there's no amount of elite prospects. You got to be a good coach. Uh, so, this is going to – we're going to see about Penny in two years. And I said it before. I was like – maybe it was like a couple months ago. I was like – then you got to figure something out now, man, because you ain't getting these elite prospects no more. You got to be a coach. So if you're not coaching them up, then Memphis, I mean, we love you, but after a couple of years of bad play, it's going to be a problem. Yeah. So that's my second word. It's going to be a problem for Penny if you don't, if you don't get it together. So. No, I think if you want to be somewhat positive about him potentially going to the – him at least putting his name in the NBA draft. One, he's not signing with the agent. Two, I just looked on the mock draft. He's not even listed to be selected at all. So, and like you said earlier before we came on, like – there's no drafts coming by. At least right now, there's no draft coming by. So yeah, yeah. if you want to look at, if you want to find some type of silver lining about it, you can say, okay, like if you're going to go from, if you're going to go to go from uh, committing to Memphis and then put your name into the NBA draft, but you, I'm pretty sure, you, in order for you to go to NBA draft, you're pretty sure you would think that you have a pretty good like, um, that's what I'm looking for. You at least think that you're going to be selected within the first two rounds. And so right now, he's not even projected to go either one. So you would think he would just naturally come back if you want to be positive about it. But again, at this point, I don't know because, <laughs> I mean, Rajon Tucker, <laughs> he went on draft yeah. and you see where he went. So uh, we'll see. I think what's going to happen is now that um, the NBA is about to open back up um, their practice facilities, um, I think he's probably going to have a few workouts. Like, like you said, probably just test the waters a little bit, just to kind of see what NBA teams are thinking or where they where he could be taken. Uh, and if nothing changes and he's not on nobody's mock draft, then we can see him back in Memphis. So uh, I think he's just going to test the waters once these facilities open back up. Some of these teams may or may not. We never know. Bring him in for a workout just to see where he's at. So. I think is if I if I can put my two cents in, if I'm Landers Noli, I don't write a letter like that if I plan on coming back. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I know I understand what you said, Scholar, about the silver liner, but I guess to me the silver lining is, like I said, if I write a letter like that, I'm gone whether or not, you know what I'm saying, I'm in the top two or not. It's like he kind of made a rash decision, you know, picking Memphis at first. That's what it seemed like to me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Got his, got his followers up on social media or whatnot. I don't know if he had a true intent of, of, of really playing, you know, based off the letter coming just like that. You know what I'm saying? Memphis no, University man. too, like get, get yeah, like come on, dog. <laughs> University of Memphis, ain't no Memphis right. University. Yeah. Exactly. They said Memphis State or something. Memphis University. <laughs> <laughs> so <it's> like, did, <laughs> did you did you really plan on coming to play for us? And that's been my ever ever since I read the note. That's been the biggest thing in my head. Is like, did you really want to come play for us? You know what I'm saying? And then, like I said, the G League would be a third option if you don't want to come back to a school because I'm not sure how you know Tiger Nation will receive them, especially after leaving us like this. Yeah. So. Um, the Villa, not Villa, no, Virginia Tech, um, like a lot of sports writers, like right before or right around the time he signed with Memphis last week, 
they came in like 929 station, some of the radio shows, and they were just saying how they basically painted him as like a selfish player, essentially. Uh, he attempted like 13 shots a game for those 15 points. And it was just like he wants somewhere where he wants to get shots and be playing in a certain position. So they were trying to figure out, since him and DJ both don't want to play four, how to, it was it was a lot of all this stuff going on with Dick. So I, we hope, I don't know, we may not, in the end, we may not be missing out on much. If I don't think we are. Those things are true. No. Um, but I guess we found out later this week um, who's left. Because uh, Kareem, Kareem May <laughs> <laughs> into the trail. <laughs> and he's probably going to Michigan State anyway if he don't go. So it's like, at this point, what transfer? I mean, I know still people transferring, but, like, I, I don't. I guess we found out this week on more names. On yeah, week. I feel like there's yeah. something that, that we're missing and that we're not – that we don't have information about. Uh, when I say information, like the draft um, and options, um, but I think Landers, like you, you guys stated, you write a, a letter like that, you're probably not coming back, but also why did you even choose to come to Memphis in the first place? Mm -hmm. um, to Trevor's point, what if you got information about, you know, such and such mm -hmm. uh, with the Memphis investigation, and you probably did. Uh, but again, again, you knew that before you came. Mm -hmm. um, you knew oh, there, there was that option. Um, but I think at this point, especially if you looked and saw that he's not even in the first round, so to speak, not even the second round, uh, possibly, this starts more the progression of that minor league, so to speak, um, that takes away from college basketball uh, and the NCAA in terms of like four or five star recruits. Um, and to your point, Savage, earlier, maybe it is a three star and um, Shark is three star recruits and building a team. You take this like really back to like the old days, like 60s, 70s basketball, where you had to really build a team and you had to really coach. I'm not taking anything away from Penny um, at all or his coaching staff, but I think the era of really getting that five star player now, especially with that uh, half million getting signed, is getting less and less as our years continue to move on. Um, so you have to build a team from people you can get in the door now, will stay in the door for longer than a year or two. All right. So um, before we move on to Precious, got a couple things to mention. I just got a notification. I'm, pretty, I'm sure y'all got a two two lane guard charged with murder. To Sean Hightower. Jesus. Ain't that where Lawson go? <laughs> yeah. But he was. Yeah, it was oh, okay. 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 <laughs> with a homicide in Georgia earlier this month. Jesus. Oh, no. Murder. So. Yeah. Uh, that's the news I didn't expect to see. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a rebound. Yeah. Really? Oh, also news, uh, Tyler Harris picked ISU for uh, his college, Iowa State. So that's a good that, move for him. That was expected. Yeah. yeah. That, was, that was expected. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was actually yeah. – I was going to mention that, Nick. So, um, mm. that's this is supposed to – I mean, all good news. This is supposed to be – no sound. Man, it's – Boy. Like, cool. He's out – you know, high, Iowa State, that's a good school. I think he'll get plenty of playing time. Big 12. Yeah. Um, then we're supposed to be – Precious. I mean, he even went to the draft, but I mean, we we happy for him generally. So, you know, <laughs> this mm. is straight good news. And, yeah. But let's talk about Precious. He uh, fished the end of his name in the draft. I mean, I I always thought he was. I mean, mm. top ten is hard. No matter what he said, all the stuff he was putting out, I just really didn't. I really just didn't see something that, I mean, honestly. But yeah. uh, how, how do y'all feel about him basically putting it out like he was? Well, somewhat trolling us. How y'all feel about that? Um, that I don't, me personally, mm -hmm. I don't. I didn't take it as trolling. I really considered and looked at it um, as if like he really loved the program. Uh, I think Took mentioned it last week. If you go back and look at the um, the, the documentary series that uh, the Memphis Tiger had over the course of the season, like he really expressed <laughs> how much he loved the the program and the city. And I think you can still see even see that after after the season was over due to the coronavirus or whatever. Um, so I didn't necessarily take it as Charlotte. I really – I thought initially that he was just going to declare um, for – I just thought he was initially going to declare. But it's kind of – as time kind of weighed on, and I think he kind of tried to see what moves the program were making, things like that. I think that probably had a factor into whether he would come back or not. Um, but at the end of the day, like we said last week, I think he made the right decision. I think it's the difference between being a first-round pick and being a top 10 pick. That's two totally different things. Like, that's mm -hmm. that's a whole different record range when it comes to money. So, at the end of the day, I'm happy that he that he's going. I'm happy that he's going to get his money. Uh, I'm happy that he um, that he talked about Memphis in the way that he did. Um, it's just now, at the end of the day, like, 
how do we rebound from that, right? <laughs> um, so now that you gotta look at it like I mean, we missed on the Purdue guy that was um that was I think at least had Memphis on his um on his list to come. Sure, he went to a small school. Right. He went to BYU of all yeah, places. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty good basketball school. Yeah. They, they they were ranked right. last year. I mean, oh, yeah, I was right. still saying, still like, I mean, yeah, I guess. Basketball. he yeah. had Kentucky and stuff on his on his list too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So at this point, you kind of see, you want to see how um, last time <laughs> how he comes back, uh, what he looks like um, going into next year. Um, Malcolm Dandridge, how he looks going into next year, um, and then also the grad transfer that we got on uh, not the grad transfer, but, um, uh, yeah, on my too. So you kind of want to see how those three look um, at that power court and center position. But at the end of the day, definitely that, that, that he's going. And getting his money. I think Precious has a lot of self awareness. I think he's very smart. Uh, he loves Memphis. I think he prolonged his decision to kind of get guys to choose Memphis, if that makes sense, mm-hmm. uh, before ultimately saying, you know, I'm about to go pro. Um, I I wanted him to stay for for you know selfish reasons, but it was always best for him to go pro. Uh, I'm looking at Draft.net right now. Um, and they don't have him in the lottery. They got him going 18 to Milwaukee, which would be a great fit for him. You put him as a big man, you still got Giannis out there, you know, that'd be nasty, you know. Uh, but I, I think Precious, uh, he, he did a lot for the city in a in a dark time where wise situation, people say they coming, they not coming, you know, there's a lot of, you know, BS going on, but Precious, you know, he came in with his, with his lunch pail and got to work, so. Um, I don't think anybody can hate Precious for going pro or for or anything that he did during his time here. Uh, where we go from here, um, like I said, it's, it's going to be coaching now. Uh, what, what's the guy's name? Rand, R-A-N-D? Is that his name? The transfer guy? Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, he, he got to step in now. I mean, you, four blocks got to start for me, man. Like, you can get <laughs> rebound and block shots. You got to start for me, dog. So, uh, I, if anything, I think this 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 is going to be – it's going to open up the perimeter game for Memphis uh, because you don't have any inside score. <laughs> uh, DJ Jeff is going to have to be a, a scorer. Uh, Lester, uh, shoot, who left? <laughs> Tyler Harris is gone. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's going to be coaching now. Coach some offense. So, I don't know what Penny got him doing right now, but uh, he need to get some playbooks or something. Like, right. yeah. Basically, we got no offense coming out the bench because all them guys. Start. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, Halo and uh, Jamie and Bobby. Halo. <laughs> nope. I think it's time for just us to just consider everything and 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 assume the bad. Like I'm looking at the right on the ball. We got Tyler Harris, who loves Memphis, and Memphis loves him back. You know, went to another school. Landis Noly said, "Okay, I'm not coming to Memphis." Precious waiting until the last minute to declare for the draft. I think I think the NCAA really is about to come down on Memphis. It's unfortunate, but we all started the episode saying that, you know, that's definitely a Memphis curse. And the Memphis curse would say that we're about to receive this one-year ban, which that's the only explanation I have for why all of this is going on right now. So I think, you know, we, we say – we we look at Penny and be like, okay, we you gonna have to put yourself coaching, but shoot, he gonna be able to coach, but shoot, he ain't gonna be able to go to no 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 postseason next game next, next season. So I yeah. think that that's why I'm going with that. Um, I'm I'm expecting the year ban, honestly, which is like I said, a right on the wall for me because everything is happening is happening, you know, boom, 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 so quick, and it's like somebody knows something and it's just you know they ain't released it yet. So I'm 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 assuming the worst for next the, year. The, the key year for Penny is going to be the year after this upcoming year. Okay. Like you you will have your your seniors and your juniors from a class that you brought in, and if we're not competitive in terms of like making the tournament, I, I <laughs> you gotta figure something out, man. You gotta figure something out, man. Like I, I hate I, I hate to be ominous, but it's like I don't I don't I don't I don't think the new athletic director is gonna want that. You know what I'm saying? Want those pro- one, the problems of like NCAA violations and then two, the Memphis, this is the city's team and y'all not winning. Like, eh, I don't know, man. He, he the guy came from an SEC school. You know, they came from Florida. Mm. I don't know, man. I don't know. That's you got to figure fish, it out. You're going to fish yeah. to be a football school. That's right. <laughs> that's, 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 what he, that's what he wants. That's what he really wants, a football yep. school. After the draft. I mean, <laughs> that's what he wants. Came from Florida, so, hey. I mean, at the end of the day, like, if we go, if we do get the postseason ban and we do win 20 games, like, it's, 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 a, it's a successful season. 
considering the yeah. uh, I guess the lack of, of, of talent that we have on, on this on this particular upcoming season. So uh yeah. <laughs> I'm expecting yeah. the worst. For me quickly, um as much as I think all of us would have wanted pressures to come back, um I was leaning more to towards him leaving because um for me, the longer you stay, if you're a lottery prospect, the longer you stay in school, the more things they find about you to pick apart. And I think the weaknesses that Precious has in this game can definitely be fixed in the NBA. Like, he can potentially be the prototypical, as they were mentioning, the prototypical little small ball five um, going into the NBA. Um, last season, he was 15-10. and 10, And I think for him to keep that first-round status, if he would have come back, he was going to have to be 20 and 10, like a night. And he was really going to have to showcase the fact that he can really score on top of uh, maintaining those 10 rebounds a game. That's why I just felt that when the time was came, as soon as ESPN Plus listed him as a top 10 in the lottery, I was like, just go. Because whatever your weaknesses are, it could be fixed in the NBA as opposed to you just coming back. Because like I said, the longer you stay – the more they find to pick about, the more things they find about you to pick apart. And then from that point, you start slipping in the draft. So. Yeah. Uh, Memphis will have two bigs selected in the top 15. And I just want to try to put some type of great spin on the great things that have been happening in Memphis because we all can write – uh, horror stories about what's been going on, especially this past year with Memphis. But if we look at the NBA draft, we know that two players from this draft, if not lottery picks, two of those players will definitely be from the University of Memphis, representing the University of Memphis, whether they have their, uh, James Wives represents Memphis or not. <laughs> um, but regardless of the fact, you know, you still have two players that made it to the NBA and, and are going to show promise within the NBA. Um, and again, what that means for Memphis Tigers basketball, boys basketball is something different, but at least we're showing that Memphis Tigers are made for the league. Um, and people are choosing Memphis first and then going to the league. So I'm trying to spin it that way more positively for us because we can continue to beat ourselves down and then not know where the light is at the end of the day. Um, so shout out to Precious for going to get that money, David Ruffin. Um, <laughs> you know, see you at the lottery. All right. Enough saying this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Look at some 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 other stuff going on. Thanks for positivity. Thanks for positivity. Oh, yeah, Thanks for trying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, shout out to Precious. Shout out to Tyler. Um, good luck to both. I would definitely be watching both at the uh, next level for Precious and at Iowa State for Tyler. But in the fail news, like I said, we're gonna mention draft in another episode. Mm-hmm. This is a bunch of just other news that happened outside. First, Rob Gunkrout, Gun Gronkowski, Gronk. He came back to the NFL. He asked for a trade. He said he wanted to play with Tom Brady. They granted his wish. Trade to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for a fourth round pick. And did they change sevens or something? Or? Six, I think. Six. Something like that. Something like that. Crazy. Yep. Yeah. Oh, Gronk, Tampa Bay. You got Gronk, Mike Gibbons. Chris Goff. Jay Howard. <laughs> Jay Howard, they don't trade. Uh, uh, you guys are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. Somebody, 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 somebody ain't happy. <laughs> ain't gotta right. trade nobody. But uh-huh. it was funny. I, it was funny to me, like just seeing Gronk on wrestling, you know, and actually <laughs> winning a match, then coming back and playing for Tom Brady. You know, that's like Tom Brady's ultimate security blanket. So it makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. It's gonna be a fun offense to watch for sure. I'm so happy we we in our rebuilding stages. Because if we weren't rebuilding right now, I'd be kind of anxious, re- a lot more anxious to see how we fare against, you know, Tampa Bay and uh, and New Orleans. But um, shout out to Tampa Bay. They they trying to be the first team to, you know, represent the Super Bowl and be in it. So it'll be the ultimate feat for Tom Brady for his career. Like I said, he got his, his security blanket back. I don't think they're going to trade anybody. Just let the offense flow. Just, just let it flow. Um, for me, I personally – do not care. <laughs> I don't care. It's the Tampa Bay. He gone from the AFC. He gone from the AFC. <laughs> I have zero problem with that. We probably won't play the NFC South until maybe next year. Y'all, Cowboys, Panthers, Eagles, y'all have fun because that's who y'all make. <laughs> One of y'all got to see it at some point. Two, y'all got to see it twice. We got to see it twice. As a Steelers fan, I don't care because we ain't got to see it. 
Titans don't either. I think we played the NFC North. Exactly. So we good. We, I don't care what it is. Ain't in my division. Ain't in my conference. So I don't care. Uh, to me, it's just a. I said it a little bit earlier while uh, Shark, you were talking about. It's just privilege. Like how privileged is Gronk to really go in and request to be traded to your favorite person, right? Your favorite quarterback. Like you didn't get traded to the Chargers. Um, you didn't get traded to the the Bengals. You went in and said, "Hey, I want to go play with Tom Brady." Okay, we'll make that happen. Um, and Gronk can, can be looked at in the past decade as one of the best tight ends to really play the game of, of football. Um, and so, to me, yes, the Panthers will be 0-2 against them. I won't mention them. Oh, sorry, you maybe can edit that out later. Um, but wow. <laughs> hey, we need Raiders to shoot up. I need that beef that y'all had to group me the other day. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in quiet because it's all back to state. Um, I'll be fine to start that in a moment. Um, but like, I, I just, I really hate, I hate white privilege. Mm. That's what it is. It's white privilege. Yeah. There's no black tight end. There's no Antonio Brown didn't get traded to exactly where he wanted to go. No matter what he did, he didn't get traded to where he wanted to go. And we can name off any Melvin Gordon didn't really go where he wanted to go. And so, like, it's just privilege. And then it sucks that hopefully we can see it more. It, it not just happens. It happens all over and even in sports. It's happening now, and I really hate that. And mm. I hate that we're going to set the deck for Tampa Bay. I don't hope on no injuries. I don't want any injuries, but I want the best team to come out the NFC. And it's definitely not going to be the Panthers, but for sure, <laughs> for sure, I don't want to see the Buccaneers either. So, I'll say this. I, go ahead. I'll go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Because I, 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 I'm with you, but I don't think this is a, 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 a time for the white privilege moment. And that's what I mean by that. Because the players that you named have had off, off the field issues. Like Gronk has been really, you know, on the field, one of the best off the field. Even though he partied too much, no off the field may, parties. No, 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 no. I'm saying off the field. Like besides the partying, that may be the only white privilege thing about this. But when you have, when you're retired, and you know, you go to Bill Belichick and say, "Hey, I want to go for the Bucks, or else I'm gonna stay retired." He might as well go and get their four pick and, and throw them deuces at you. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's how I look at this whole thing. I don't look I, at it. I as think white it's. Boy. I think it's. I think it is some level of privilege with Gronk because. He he came out and talked the other day talking about how uh, they traded him to Detroit and he just said nah I'm a, I'm gonna just stay retired like he, but he who? has that option he has he does have the really? option because he is retired yeah and once but, 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 but Gronk wants to play though he wanted to play but I, I think what she did is saying is that if this was a black person oh he's a he's cocky he's arrogant he's this that and the third but Gronk does oh just Gronk being Gronk he's just being goofy you know yeah. that, but it's kind of different for for black players yeah I mean that, but. Imagine Tony Bates came back. Yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. To the Colts? Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, damn, we were probably like, what? <laughs> but yeah, retired, retired or not, like, he was technically still under contract with the Patriots. He still had a year left. Yeah. Uh, so, like, uh, Savage just said, like, they traded him to the Lions. He just basically said, no. I'm like, uh, dude, you're still under contract with the Patriots, retired or not. You can stay retired and just keep collecting checks, but if you wanted to play, this is where we're going to send you, so I'm all in with Shitty on the privilege thing, so, hey. Now, as far as the football part of it, uh, I, don't, I don't like the Patriots, still don't like them, but I'm I'm curious to see how it's going to work with Tampa Bay. I I mean, it's going to be some fun offense. Um, golly, I don't know how you how you guard everybody, because <laughs> Mike Evans is like 6'5", Bronk <laughs> like 6'6", six, six. Godwin get like a four three speed. OJ Howard like six four. Then you got Brady. They just drafted some linemen for him. So I don't I don't hate Tampa Bay for doing this. I'm kind of curious to see. Uh, but hey, I'm with it, man. Hey, the more more football to watch. I mean, I didn't watch Tampa Bay aside from when they beat the Eagles what, last year, the year before. So hey, <laughs> I got something to say for all my social media people. Uh -oh. Everybody keep bringing up Aaron Hernandez. <laughs> <laughs> All these jokes, these memes. Something man, it's funny now, but it's like, man, come on now. <laughs> I saw yeah. one come out of the sky like Aaron Hernandez. It's going to be like for the bus to join time. Bring me the bird. I like, man. From the pits of hell. The question is, is he coming from the sky? He coming from. 
<laughs> he going from hell, dog. <laughs> wow, come on, man. Hey, <laughs> keep real, man. But my thoughts on it, I mean, Tampa Bay, I mean, that's Super Bowl contenders. I mean, I don't – we'll do our predictions as the season comes close, but, I mean, their defense was good. They added it on, and we were talking about the draft, and they added it on, so. Yeah. Hey, more power to them. we see what the Patriots look like um, with these – all these players that they normally have without Tom Brady. I'm still trying to say they rebuilding too. Because I know Brian Horry is not going to be their star. No. I just know Brian Horry is not going to be their star. They're still the middle. Yeah. Cam Newton. I'll, be I'll reserve that for the for the draft show. Yeah. My comments about yeah. the Patriots. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next one. Percy Harvey. I know y'all heard the name in a while. Nope. I know enough no. about this. Y'all heard the name. People listening to the show probably don't, probably don't even know. <laughs> Were we recording when he was in the league? No. Exactly. But he retired. It's a real question. But he didn't even retire. He just stopped playing. He just stopped playing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So he's trying to make a return. When I first heard it, I thought he was – I was trying to think of age. Thought it was a late April Fool's joke. Yeah. <laughs> but I just said, hey, tell like, you know what? He did, like, lead the game a little early. He only 31, about to turn 32. He was a speedster when he played, but he had migraine issues, uh, which I will think about Percy Harvey. And, his pop, and he didn't even look like him. I saw the video, bro. Bro got dreads now. Yeah, I'm like, I didn't, long dreads, like, didn't That's how long you've been out the league. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't recognize him, but hey, watch out. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm really Percy. not like. I mean, I hope he gets a contract with somebody. I don't see yeah. it happening yeah. because he's been out the league yeah. so long. Like, I really. I hope mean, this this thing about Percy Harvin, he his game is predicated on speed. That right. man, 31 years old, bro. I can find me a 20 year old that can run fast and oh, return kicks. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I mean, best of luck to him, but <laughs> I don't see it happening. That, that I don't either. Happen. I don't either. I mean, he might he might get into like camp, but I mean, if a twenty one year old doing the exact same thing for cheaper, yeah, I ain't yeah. Been, nah. <laughs> or maybe he go to Tampa Bay. Shit, I don't know. All y'all want to go to Tampa Bay? How about this? Look, I line up. I line up wide at Tampa Bay. I'm six foot three. I go catch some pass for Tom Brady. I'm a water boy for the Tampa Bay. <laughs> 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 so, hey, before this first go, let me go back to the last time he played. He lived Thank you. in 2016. Woo! The Buffalo Bills. Let me start in the Buffalo. Let me start in 2012. Mm-hmm. For one. He played. That was when he was in Minnesota. Spent his first four years in Minnesota. Yeah. He played nine games in 2012. One now, now it's more than one. Now it was one. One game in 2013. Jeez. And he played with the Seahawks and the Jets in 2014. Yeah, he played 13 that year. I he got traded. Five games for the Bills in 2015 Jeez. and two games in 2016. That's right. Uh, that's the Sean Jackson. That's what the Sean Jackson is now. Ooh. Yep. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's good. Yeah. That sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Get you about eight games and that's it. Yep. Yeah, get eight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And my problem with Percy Harvin is the one person that's going to be undefeated at all times is Father Time. Maybe there you go. And, and Percy Harvin did what he did at Florida and uh, Minnesota based upon speed. I'm sorry. Like we keep saying, there's got to be somebody that's undrafted um, yeah. that can do mm-hmm. much better uh, yeah. right now because you haven't had even that contact part of it. Ooh, for in four years? Ooh, yeah, yeah, that's right. a lot. Um, well, you and, should know, Mr. August Milk. Right, and we're not talking about the Cowboys, but you're right. <laughs> you're right. Yeah. 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 Um, but like, the, no, you're in the slot, and now teams have been conditioned to have a slot person or a linebacker to cover you. Yeah, Percy Harvin would literally be signed based upon his name, not based upon what he can do. It. Mm-hmm. And if you're going to pay him for whatever amount of reason that's supposed to be. He should go, when when Vince gets it together, go back and be a star in the XFL. And, and then try to talk to me about the NFL again. Because you're not quite ready to go across the middle, catch that pass again, like you thought you were, with this day and age. Hey, XFL might be done, bro. I'll I know. Up, he uh, soon. <laughs> it'll be 30. Yeah, that is. With that lawsuit coming on. <laughs> Even with that, he'll be 33 at that point. He, yeah, that's not. But um, for me, I'm just... In all seriousness, I'm happy that he's in a decent headspace to even want to attempt this combat because just from all the stuff that I heard about um, him having some mental health issues, having anxiety, 
Uh, him having to smoke literally every week just to be able to play. Um, like I said, kudos to him, you know, for having the headspace to even want to attempt the comeback. But at 31, man, I, I just can't see it. Like Savage said, they'll probably bring him into camp just to see where he's at. But I, I can't see him playing at all this season, especially, like you said, being out for four years uh, since your last name. Yeah, that's – more power to you, man. God bless you, person. God bless you. That's all I'm going to say. And it's not like he was balling when he right. left. <laughs> <laughs> balling when he right. left. Like, he, like you say, well, he played two games. Yeah, last he year. got Teron Lou. Yeah. Right? He got stepped over and right past. Move on. He said he got Teron Lou. You made Tyron. that a verb. Come on, Sharky, move on. <laughs> All right. Um, I guess it's not official yet, but uh, Adam Schefter reported this morning that James Winston was um, basically going to sign with the Saints. So, how you feel about that? No, I'm Pittsburgh still a fan, and I'm pissed. I'm absolutely pissed. <laughs> I'm pissed. <laughs> pissed. I'm 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 pissed.
having Jameis in there is just basically doubling down on that and much better situation. So kudos to Jameis and kudos to the Saints if this deal goes through. Man, I just saw one of the funniest tweets ever. Somebody said Jameis Winston has completed 10 career passes to Saints players. Taysom Hill has completed seven. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hey. 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 That's beautiful. I don't even know how you look at that. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, clearly, he likes white and gold, so that, that man do his thing, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, oh, man, man, man. Okay. Um, before we move on, I, me and Tuke talked about it a little bit before we started, but after all – well, you know, the draft happened, quarterbacks, all this, James Winston signed with New Orleans, apparently. Is Cam Newton playing next year? Because I, I was literally trying to think of every single team while I was driving. I was like, what the hell are you going to go to? You know what's funny? I, I thought that we would take a flyer on him, but after the Hurst thing, I'm like, I don't know where he's going to go, to be honest. I mean, F- Pittsburgh, y'all want him? Like, if you want to be a backup, they obviously want to be honest, I, I, at this point, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's the only thing I can think of. No, Dallas? Dallas? I would I mean, much rather have him than Mason Rudolph and Delvin Hodges. Like, I don't want another season of those two. <laughs> at this point, we, we don't have a choice. Is either that or another season of the duck in Mason Rudolph. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I, don't I mean, like I like I told Sharky, man, I think because we're in quarantine, a lot of people aren't able to, you know, give a test run on Cam Newton to see how healthy he is. But you don't need a test run. He can just be – it's Cam Newton. Like, it, off name it, alone, it's Cam, he it's Cam Newton, but after any big injury for any player, yeah, I think you – you know, any big player that becomes a free agent, you still got to see, you know, what, he, what he's talking about. Like the name Cam Newton says a lot, but it, like the last couple of years, he he been hurt, so you don't want to spend money or waste time on a player that may or may not be you know good. But how much money would you be spilling on him? You see what I'm saying? Like I see where Savage was you, going. With it. Like it's I mean, if anything, he's getting a one year deal. I can't see him signing. Yeah, somebody gonna sign him. Yeah, it's, it's a one year deal that's gonna cost you how much money? You see what I'm saying? Like I I, I hear your point too, but at the same time, it's just like it's Cam Newton at the end of the day, and then I'm, I'm only giving him. I'm pretty sure. Wherever ever he signs, it's only a one year deal for however much it is. You ain't losing that much money. Yeah, I think. Well, to go with his point, I think it come down to him being a starter or backup at this point. Well, I mean, I think obviously he's backup now. now. But I think before, <laughs> I think before, but yeah, you okay. still was considered a starter. You know, he, he was thinking he was a starter, yeah. so that's why why he had got signed. At so this now, point, it's like what team? Because if I'm Cam Newton, and I know Cam Newton is prideful enough, he's he's gonna want to start. What team would even give him the opportunity to start, like, like you know, or, 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 or compete? Of, every team I think of has either, like, a – Ricky quarterback, quarterback or – quarterback that they want to try and see what they got in him, or they got, like, a quarterback that was in their system last year. Yeah. They prefer to use. Yeah. I'm Which still, is I'm why – I'm still on the Patriots. Like, pay, new, uh, Bill and Chase. They going to steal them. I, I, I don't <laughs> think the Patriots – because because Cam is, like – Cam is Tom like Brady on steroids in terms of his ego. Like, it's actually, mm-hmm. like, he's, he can't come in, like, being Cam Newton. I, I I said this maybe a couple shows ago. I said Detroit Lions just because mm, Stafford yeah. at some point will get hurt. Yeah, and that's the only thing I think of is the Lions. That's it. Only time. Because yeah. somebody said Jacksonville. I was like, they gonna, I don't think Jacksonville. They want to stay they rebuild. They, 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 they want to see what they got in Garden Mission if they rebuild. Yeah. And what's Kyle? I can say Chargers. They just drafted Herbert, but they, they want to Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod Taylor. They got Tyrod Taylor. Yeah. Oh, I, Chargers <laughs> for sure. Yes, I, I'm. They still could use them, but I, I don't Chargers, know they will at this point. Like, Broncos, I think nah, use Bron- them. the Broncos. The Broncos, Broncos, Drew nah, Broncos ain't getting no black quarterback. I, I know. I'm not <laughs> sold on Drew Lock, but I'm saying I'm trying to think about them, what the team's thinking of. What's that? Yeah, Eric, yeah. Eric, I think it's only the Lions, bro. Oh, what okay. they're thinking? I'm trying to think what they're thinking. They, they, their draft was specific. I saw where they drafted. Yeah. It was basically to say, "Hey, Drew Lock, yeah, go see we got them." Yeah, they did. I literally just scroll through every team, and I'm like, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> nope. Lions, the only team came out because of Matthew yeah. Stafford's injury. So it's like, yep. but then yeah, I think it was lying. Her quarterback comes on there, Ross. I'm like, right. We'll see. I hope for yeah, the best. But guess what? It's time for man. Oh, oh, oh. oh. I got one. Oh, no. I got one. So, <laughs> Green Bay Packers. Um. <laughs> <laughs> hey. right, that's nothing, nothing else need to be said about the Grimmay Packers. They got Jordan Love. Uh, we'll talk about that, you know, next episode. But Aaron Rodgers clearly got to be upset. I did not know that they didn't draft no offensive weapons nope. in the first round for 15 years. I don't know what team has done that. 
aside from the Packers. 15 years, no offensive weapon. So clearly Matt LaFleur and Rodgers got some kind of, you know, beef or whatever. Uh, Rodgers had a down year last year, but even the down year was like, what, 25 touchdowns, a handful of interceptions, 4,000 yards. My troll now is this. Aaron, and it might be, uh, I don't know how I'm going to say it, but I, this is my prediction overall with Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers will win Super Bowl again. It won't be in Green Bay. It'll be the team that passed him during his draft, 49ers. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Goes back out. Man. Aaron Rodgers going back to California with San Fran. Garoppolo will be gone at some point. Aaron Rodgers going to go to San Fran. He's going to be like an older player with a lot of young weapons, and he'll win Super Bowl with the 49ers. Mm. That's, that's not bad. That's good. That, that, that's mm. not bad. I, 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 say, I start off and say not a troll, bro. That's not bad. Good, good. Good process to get to it. Good, good perception. Like, <laughs> yeah, like everybody still like is is a great quarterback. But what they go, got going on in Green Bay, nobody know. You know. It's funny you said it because I was thinking of a similar troll and all for um, for Aaron Rodgers, um, but I didn't think it would be in San Fran. Just to be a troll, I was gonna say it was gonna be in Dallas within the next two years. That might be it too. I don't know. <laughs> it might be it. Too. <laughs> well, you gonna win a doggone thing? They not going Super Bowl. I don't know about that in Dallas. Not. They ain't gonna win nothing. <laughs> <laughs> they are gonna find a way to lose. Because I just because I'm not gonna say nothing. Too. Look up. He loves playing in the Texas Stadium in the new yeah. uh, in the stadium because every time he's there, he's lighting up. I'm not. Oh Jesus. <laughs> Five yeah. he's, he's five and zero. Oh. oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't mind. Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to trade for him today. <laughs> 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 right. Yeah. And, and so I, I, I don't know if he signs with San Francisco. I think he does have enough to win a Super Bowl with someone else. I'm still baffled by what the hell the Packers are doing, um, because even they drafted a running back too. And yeah, like, not, yeah. Yeah. it wasn't like with, uh, Jones was giving you like BS. He was still giving you yeah. quality. You saw my fancy team. Trust me. Right. Yeah. Right. He, yeah. I mean, he beat us uh, with the yeah. Cowboys. So like, I don't get what what they're doing. I think the the rebuild is going to happen soon with the Packers. Um, much better than it will be for the Panthers. And so I think for sure <laughs> that he will go and win the Super Bowl somewhere. I just don't think it'll be with San Francisco. Okay. I say it's not true. Um, I mean, you can pick, pick it a little. I think it'll be two years. I mean, when I first saw them draft Jordan Love, one, they traded up. Yeah, they drafted him. Yeah, they first. They to compare like when he, they drafted him and Brett Favre. Brett Favre kept going back and forth every time. Right? And at that right. point, they had to say, hey, we got to get somebody in here that can possibly come in and leave. And he still had to sit three years, and Brett Favre still actually retired and tried to come back even then. And they just had to say, screw So in this case, Aaron Rodgers didn't say nobody don't retire. He's yeah. still some years though. He said like four or five years. Right. Four now. So, my first thoughts was, you know, as a Titans fan, you know, Tannehill got two years to sit there. I think two years is where Rodgers be traded. Yeah. And Matt McCord was our offense coordinator. So yeah, I doubt he wanted to keep in the MC. Mm. So, you know, right. two years, Titans Nation, you know, former mm-hmm. offense coordinator, trading to the opposite conference, you know. I know. Look in the year, it's a year Brian Tannehill, of course, is not it. But we'll see. Two years. We'll see. Uh, I Tied up. I'll say troll only because I don't want it to be the 49. Because then if it's, 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 it's my dad, it's the 49. <laughs> they have five uh, supposed to now six, and now we tied with the Patriots, of course. Um, I do, I mean, if, if you're Aaron Rodgers, you've got to be pissed off, right? You just got to be pissed off. Like, you see what your what your rival team is doing in the Minnesota Vikings. You see the success they're having by getting receivers, uh, drafting receivers well, making sure that they have weapons. And then you just, I mean, you're Aaron Rodgers and you're not getting anything. Like this last, I guess, pretty good draft uh, uh, draft pick was what, Eddie Lacy? That was a long time ago. Ooh. Eddie Lacy, oh, oh my God. God. Feast mode, oh man. I had to think of Eddie Lacy because the like, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. But anywho, like, I mean, I, I, I really want him to go somewhere else. It's just because like, it kind of gets me in that mindset that I have with Kobe, like in the sense of how, the Lakers organization treated Kobe and they didn't get players around him. Like somebody is great as the talent of oh, Kobe Bryant and Aaron Rodgers. You don't put enough, te- you don't put enough weapons around them or, or people to at least scare somebody. You're not doing it. And that's what makes me mad about the Green Bay Packers. But at the end of the day, like, I just really hope that he just finds a way out of Green Bay. I think like 
like you said, he can't go anywhere for the next at least two years. But I really hope he goes somewhere else. And hopefully, hopefully it's not the San Francisco. I would hope not. Go ahead take the Cowboys, though. Oh, hell no. I want to take either one of them. <laughs> <laughs> if I had to choose 49ers and the Cowboys, it's the 49ers. Trust me, I don't want to be the Cowboys. Well, oh, hey, man. Hey, 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 hey. She'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> For the record, I'm just saying that I do think Aaron Rodgers will win another season. So I just don't think it'll be San Francisco. It'll be Dallas. Ew. I'm with you, Sean. Ew. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That, like I said, that move has Matt LaFleur Matt all over it. So, yeah. So, like Ooh, right. wait until we talk about the draft, because it's actually not Matt LaFleur. So. Okay. We I'll go into I got you. I don't see you know it. You don't see you know Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else got one? All right. Cool. All right. Like I said, we had two episodes this week. Y'all already heard the other one by the time this will come out. So, to then, deuce. Peace. Peace. Peace.